Hey guys, today I'm going to be doing my out-of-box review for the HG Armblood Orphans Gundam Ball. So as you can see, I've shoddily placed a large white poster behind uh, or in front of what is usually my black backdrop here because this Gundam is so black it's basically it was like basically impossible to see on camera <laughs> trying to shoot this against my black background so hopefully this will be better for you guys you can at least see what's going on with this kit with it being mostly black and yeah so it's a pretty cool kit I gotta say I mean if you built any other Iron Blood Orphans Gundam kits I mean a lot of it is very familiar I think you could probably build this and if you've built a couple of the other Gundams, especially the Astroth kit, which this does borrow quite a few parts from, you can probably build this without the instruction manual, I would imagine. I mean, there's a couple parts. Like, you have a few leftover parts on the uh, Astroth uh, runners that would maybe get confusing, like which ones you're supposed to use. Like, for example, the face plate, uh, the like face, eyes, and chin. Uh, that those parts are also there's like the set from the Astroth that are left over as extra parts, so you might like get confused about that. But I mean, overall. The kit is very familiar, so basically what it comes down to is, is it cool looking? And I think it is. This is a design that I personally really like. Uh, it's probably one of my more uh, liked, one of my most favorite of uh, the Gundam designs that we've got out from the series so far. There's things that I like and dislike, but overall it's a, definitely a really interesting one that I think is interesting. And aside from what other ones have been interesting, but like, oh, that's interesting, and you kind of like say it like, yeah no thanks. But this one is more like interesting, like, oh, that's pretty cool. So, I don't know. Of course, that's just personal opinion, but uh, let's let's get down to talking about it. It does have a lot of stickers, as we saw in the unboxing, and unfortunately, some of those stickers, uh, most of the stickers there actually are like some pretty large color apps that you're going to have to paint. Uh, but the, a couple of them, I think, would definitely be kind of optional. I mean, of course, the best thing would be to paint the whole thing, as always, but if you aren't interested in painting the whole thing, you are going to be using the stickers. I think there's a couple of the stickers you could probably get away with just not bothering with, but one of them is really bad that I would probably recommend just not bothering with, but the other one's not really so bad. So, let's get to talking about, talking about some of the close-up details and articulation here. So first off, on the head here, we have a sticker there for that camera at the top, and then stickers for the eyes. So like for the main eyes there, it's just like one sticker that lays across the eyes there, like usual. And then for these smaller eyes on the front part there, that's two separate little stickers there. And they are little, like really tiny. Uh, it did have safety flags here on the end of the V-fin. I did just uh, cut and shave those down to make those sharp. I really like this whole shape of the v-fin head the the top on the the part on the top of the head is a little bit too large for me i would have liked if that was a little, just a little bit smaller but i like the whole like front mask of the face here like giving it the two sets of eyes there and this really wide big almost like bunny rabbit ears uh v-fin for it is definitely a really cool look i really like the overall shape of the head is pretty cool pretty interesting the shark fins on the top i think it could probably also do without but overall it's a pretty interesting shape i can dig it uh, chest, shoulders really aren't aren't too exciting for the most part. If you built the uh, Astroth, they're again very similar. This sh this part here, the chest is kind of similar as well. Uh, this arm, pretty gimpy looking arm. It's just frame. It has no armor on it, which is actually kind of interesting. So I mean, it has a armor piece for like the back of the hand. But obviously the articulation for these, uh, some of the different Gundam frames worked a little bit differently. This one has the type where the uh, ball joint here, the polycap, it rotates up instead of forward. So you can get a pretty good up range out of that. But actually it's then hinder, hindered by the shoulder armor. So unfortunately you still really only get like 90 degrees. A, a vertical bend out of that. You can of course then rotate and uh, double joint there. Well actually... I'm sorry, single joint, but you are able to get a really nice bend out of that. And then, of course, the wrist is just on a ball joint. Other elbow there as well. It's just the same, but this armor is, I think, basically exactly the same as the armor from the Astroth. And it also has the same sticker on here. So this purple part for, like, around the elbow is a sticker. And this is kind of stupid that it has you put this part here on the back of the arm as well. Like, that was for, like, the support part for the weapon of the Astroth. And like then you could uh, attach the weapon into that for like extra support for holding that. But 
This kit doesn't have the connection piece for that, and so you can't actually use this with anything that the kit comes with, so it just has to just stay there like that, just pretty useless. I would probably recommend just not putting that part on, just having it off like that, because it's just kind of useless. I mean, if you like the way it looks, then put it on, or if you aren't using that connection piece for your Astaroth kit, then use that for this. Um, I, Astaroth Origin, I should say, but anyway then uh, anyway that's just kind of a silly thing I just really don't really get that in the center same amount of articulation that we usually get but it's actually kind of hindered here where we're getting this chest uh, stomach crunch here just a tiny bit there it's actually kind of hindered by the purple piece there in the center isn't allowing us to bring that as far down forward as we usually could but there's still the ball joint at the bottom which will able, allow you to move around a little bit there and then of course rotate side skirts are just on poly caps those can move up very far no problem with that those have uh, holes there in the side where you can mount stuff. Uh, here on the backpack, the backpack has actually two different kind of places where you can plug it in, which is kind of interesting, as it is here. Uh, this is just for like this standard form, but then you can unplug that and plug it into this higher one here, where then you can rotate the backpack up like that, which is pretty cool. I kind of like that for sure. Going back around here to the spike shield on this side, we have a big sticker here on the front of that. So this one was the, the one that I was saying that I think is kind of okay. If you're not planning on painting the kit, this one does give you a little bit of uh, color tone difference there, which is nice. Um, and then it also has like this, the details there. Those details are all molded into the part if you are going to just be painting that. Then on the inside, all the purple on the inside of that is all just stickers. So it's like one, two, three, four stickers that you lay on the inside of there. I mean, they look fine. And again, if you're not going to be painting, I think those definitely help a lot. It would have been nice if the, those were actual separate purple parts for painting that. But as it is, just the shield is just two parts. One part for the inside, one part for the outside. So painting that won't be too difficult. Uh, but you will just have to do that anyway. Back down to the legs, just going to be very normal, uh, just rotation at the top. They can move forward and bend, nice double joint there at the knee. The legs are asymmetrical, so like with the arms, where you have one like kind of gimpy arm that the, apparently the hand is going to keep popping out of. Uh, you have one lower leg that's a little bit more slim. It's basically just the armor, uh, one little bit of armor there, and then it's just the frame. This side is more bulked out and it has the back of the leg like the Astaroth Origin Kit. And here is that wraparound sticker that like the Astaroth Origin Kit had. That one doesn't look so good. It doesn't really fit around that shape really well. So, and that the really dark color of that, it's kind of really hard to tell. I mean, it is definitely more closer to the gray color of the thruster bell than the black. But I think if you didn't have that on there, you probably wouldn't notice that too much. Uh, here for the feet, nice purple color. Those are able to bend plenty. Pretty cool design underneath the feet, and then you have this uh, gray sticker here on the back of the foot for this part on the back of each side. And so overall, the articulation, everything, as you're, as you're noticing, some parts are coming apart. The arms are often popping out. The waist is popping out a bit. Uh, the front skirt does rotate. You can clip the front skirts to separate them, but they're so tiny I didn't even bother because I really don't think that those are going to be noticeable at all. One thing that I thought was kind of cool just about this, and just like its normal standing pose like that, is how much the knees stick out. We have this huge knee armor that just like sticks out so it almost makes it look like the legs are like really far forward and it's just in a standing position. I'll just give you guys like a kind of uh, side view there of the legs. You have just a ridiculously huge knee armor there and it's, it's pretty cool. I mean it's, it's again something of the design that I think is unique in a good way for me personally. So in terms of the stuff that this comes with we do get a shield here, another shield, the round shield. You just, you just connect this into the hand and then it just snaps onto the arm. So it's a really nice tight connection. I'll put that on here in just a minute, but overall it's a really simple design. It's just one, two, three parts there for that. And again, it definitely helps hide the fact that this arm is just so thin and tiny. So if you really don't like the look of that, it's almost completely hidden once you actually have the shield attached onto there. So no worries with that. Then we have one of its two weapons. This is the glaive and it's basically just one piece, very simple. You can just hold that there in the center and it's just got two blades on each end. And you can spin and twirl that around. It's very long, uh, a lot taller than the actual kit itself. So as you can see there, it's very, very big. Then we also have the mining hammer. So this one is also a really cool weapon. It is pointed on one end and then apparently this other end, which is kind of like a, kind of reminds me of like an ice hammer 
kind of anyway for like smashing apparently this rotates as well so like can not only smash something but then like just totally like crush it when that's just rotating so that's a pretty cool thing obviously this this doesn't do that you'd have to cut that and you know add something in there to make it do that and then we'd also have this little connection piece this connection piece will allow you to mount stuff onto the side skirt so unfortunately we only have one of those connection pieces so you can't mount both of the, the weapons onto the side skirt at once but you can at least put one on there I'm sorry to say I actually lied to you there a second ago when I said that with that connection piece you can connect either of the weapons to the side skirt. Actually, you can't attach the glaive to the side skirt with that because the shape of the handle of the glaive is slightly different, so you can only use that connection piece for the mining hammer, unfortunately. So if you don't want to have the glaive actually in hand, then you're just out of luck. No, nothing that you can really do on that. I think if you like forced it, you probably could get it to fit in there, but I think it would probably stress that, that connection piece out and then you wouldn't later be able to ever use it for the mining hammer, I have a feeling. I'm not going to try it with mine, but here at least is a look at the glaive in hand and the mining hammer there connection, connected to the side skirt. Another thing that uh, I kind of forgot about, but uh, now that I'm working with uh, trying to pose this kit, I'm suddenly remembering that uh, I think the Astroth Origin also kind of had issues with its shoulders, and this kit I'm definitely noticing has that as well. So uh, the arms are going to be kind of heavy. I mean, the arms themselves are not that heavy, but besides, I mean, you have shields on both arms, especially the spike shield is a little bit heavier, and that's uh, located like right there on the shoulder. So as you were noticing when I was trying to talk about the articulation, the arms do occasionally fall out when you're trying to handle the kit and that is definitely uh, not helped by the weight of that shield on there. And when you're trying to pose it as well, I'm feeling that that shoulder joint where the arm, like where the shoulder actually plugs into the torso of the Gundam, that uh, polycap ball joint there is quite loose. And while trying to get it in this pose, the arm kept sinking down from the weight of just the shield and the glaive in hand. I mean, the glaive is just one piece, it doesn't weigh anything, but... Uh, just with that on there, that uh, ball joint is going to be sinking now. Now, of course, the easiest thing to do would just be to, on that on that ball, uh, the plastic ball joint, just lay a little, like, uh, glue or paint or whatever, uh, nail polish, however you want to do that, onto that ball joint uh, to stiffen that up a little bit. But just have it in mind, at least, that's something that you're probably going to have to do with this kit. Another thing that I think is just kind of slightly annoying about the kit is just the fact that uh, with the round shield on the arm, then that hand is taken up. You have to have that connected into the hand unless you modify it. So if you want to do any two-handed gripping on the weapons, and both of its weapons have very long handles, uh, if you want to do any two-handed gripping, you can't have the round shield on the arm at the same time. So I think that could be a little bit frustrating depending on what kind of pose you wanted to do with the kit because that round shield definitely adds a lot to the look of the kit. I think it'd be kind of disappointing not to use it. On the other hand, if you could bear not using that, it's a pretty cool accessory of that shield is that you could then give to a different mobile suit. So, I mean, that's always good, but just something to think about again. All right, so you guys know how, like, if you have a kit that maybe you snapped up a while ago and then you, you, you go back to it, like, a couple months later or something, like, quite a while later, and you find, like, as you're trying to pose it, stuff's just, like, falling apart all over the place because that just kind of happens over time. Uh, I'm having that problem with this kit, and I just snapped this kit up this afternoon. Uh, so that's a little bit disappointing. Just, I mean, it's just falling apart all over the place. Like I said, the arm keeps falling out, uh, the hand keeps falling apart, you know, like the, the fingers and like the back of the hand just kind of fall apart. That's been a kind of an issue I've had kind of with a lot of Iron Blood Orphans kits. They all, a lot of them kind of have that problem. Um, especially with like the weight of the weapons when you have a, a little bit heavier weapon like this. So it's, yeah, just be prepared to do some joint stiffening on this kit. It's definitely going to need it. Other than that, I think it is a really nice kit. I mean, it's got a lot of really cool, interesting features. The weapons are interesting. The whole, like, design of it is definitely pretty cool. I like that a lot. And it's just unfortunate that it has, like, some of the issues with the connections being weak and things like that. So, otherwise, it's just going to have typical uh, high-grade stuff. It's got some missing color apps that you are going to have some stickers for that. You have to paint those. It's going to have uh, a few seam lines, really not all that many, basically just on the shoulders for the most part. Uh, on the weapon there, on the hammer here as well. But again, that should be expected. So overall, not too bad on the seam lines, just a couple of them. On the feet, I guess there's one kind of at the heel as well. As always, just got to say a big thank you to Mind Phoenix Hobby Store again for sending me this kit to share with you guys. 
But uh, overall, it's a solid kit. Just to know what you're getting yourself into if you're going to buy it. So with that, I'll wrap up this review. Thank you guys, as always, for watching. And if you have any other questions, comments, leave those down below. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.